March 22nd, 2021 at 4 p.m. Uh, this is the meeting for the Scenic and Historic Preservation Committee. My name is Robert Clark, uh, also on the call. Uh, if the other members could just uh, state their names for everyone, please. Marty Williams. Bill And then uh, we're also waiting on Vicki R. Curie, who is not present on the call. Uh, first case is case number 02-21-2520 Genesee Street. The applicant is Megan and Ryan McRogan. Uh, the applicants are looking to install signage at the above reference property, which should pop up screen for everyone. The app applicant is proposing to install a 70 by 38 sign perpendicular to Genesee Street. The applicant will utilize the existing post with the previous sign at this location. The post will be encased with white PVC and the missing cap will be replaced. The sign will have the McGrogan design logo in black and white and will also feature four areas for other tenant businesses. Uh, would the applicant at this time like to just say a few brief words about the signage? Sure. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm Megan and this is Brian McGrogan. Um, I know we were in front of you guys not too long ago um, for the building that we currently sit in, which is next door to this property. Uh, we also own 2522 Genesee Street here. Um, so as you can see, we're just looking to update the sign. Um, if anybody's familiar with our current property here, we've installed a beautiful sign out here. Um, we've updated this property. And so we um, really take pride in maintaining, you know, attractive, uh, professionally maintained properties. So uh, just looking to carry that over into the building next door where we are uh, relocating our business. Uh, okay. Marty and Phil, this seems pretty cookie cutter. Do you guys have any yeah. uh, questions? I was just wondering if there you have any landscaping around the sign. That's all. Um. Yep. There's there's currently landscaping there, and okay. we plan to maintain that. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see because it's it's yeah. evergreen. Um. Yep. We probably will add some flowers in there. Right now, it's just okay. an evergreen yeah. sprawl. Okay. I was just curious. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good Bill, with it. Bill, do you have anything good with it? Sorry, everybody else is moving. Uh, Patty, can you zoom in on that in any way? Bill, you're hard to understand. I didn't hear that. Could, could you zoom in on that? Zoom in? Yes. So you mentioned the um, tenant signage would be added to that. Where where would that go? Um, so it's actually our it's underneath um the banner the the Pavia banner actually is covering up the tenant sign. It's right underneath it. Um, okay. So if you see below the McGrogan design sign, it says Sphere Psychological Services, and then Office Available. So they're kind of um. They're just long black and white. Right now, it's like a long black and white um, kind of attachment on the bottom that's screwed into the side of the post. Yeah, I think it's about maybe five inches tall or something like that. It's not too big. Yeah, it's pretty small. And, and each tenant would just be stacked above each other? Yeah, yeah we only have one tenant who uh, prefers signage right now. Um, there are two offices that are available upstairs. so. Um, we will just, you know, offer that if they would like to add their sign beneath. Um, but the other tenant does not prefer signage uh, right now. So it could only be one, but there might be a couple other that um, want to be added in the future. And every tenant, if they do decide to have one, would just have text um, on their sign. It yeah. wouldn't be like their logo or any colors or anything. It would just be white sign with black text. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We have this something similar here where they're just kind of, um, you know, like white spaces and then the text can just be changed out, but it's all consistent with the color scheme. There's not any like wild differences between everything. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, uh, any other uh, issues or concerns? No. Uh, I can like make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve 2520 Genesee Street 
um, SNH case 2021 with the, um, with the application that's been submitted. I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. Carried. All right, thanks. And then, uh, Mar um, uh, I think that's it, right, Pat? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, next up, we have case 03-21. The property is 421. The applicant is the key. Sarah Stack. I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, the applicant is seeking approval of a certificate of approval. Exterior approval of the above reference property. The applicant is for Scrape and paint the exit for the house and grass. The color proposed is just snow. The applicant is also proposing to replace one window in the rear of the property with a single door entrance for the second floor. A covered board with repairs will be installed in the rear of the property. The property is shown and would the applicant like to uh, briefly walk us through the project? So, Kate, do you just want to explain to the board what you're looking to do? Is he on? He is. It's okay. showing that he is. Yeah. So, Keep, are you there? Maybe he's Thank having you. difficulty. Um, Do you want to go uh, to the next one? Maybe we'll circle the wagons with him, see if he comes back yeah. on. Yeah, we could do that. All right, let's let's uh, let's leave this one uh, to the side for the moment. Uh, I do not have the last two in front of me, so I don't know if Phil or Marnie, if uh, one of the two of you could uh, do the last two. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So the next case is SNH case number 0421. It's 2501 2503 Genesee Street. Applicant and owner is Karina Hulser. Uh, this SNH, they're looking for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, in accordance with the requirements contained in Section 229294 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Utica, the applicant is seeking approval of a certificate of appropriateness in order to make exterior improvements at the above reference property. The applicant is proposing to repair the three porches on the structure. The front porch will have the damaged wood repaired with pressure treated lumber and the decking will be replaced with Trek style decking. All colors will remain the same as existing. The porch on the side facing the driveway 2501 will have damaged wood repaired with pressure treated lumber, decking to be replaced with truck style decking, and the round pillars will be replaced with a six by six square pillars. All colors will remain with the same as existing. The second side porch facing the driveway will have the damaged wood repaired with pressure treated lumber, and the decking will be replaced with truck style decking. All <clears throat> colors will remain with the same as existing. Uh, if the tenants Karina, are, are you there? Yes, we are here. I have my husband, Jim, here, too. Okay. If you just want to explain to the board what it is that you're proposing, that would be great. And if there's any particular picture you want to see, just let me know. Okay. If you go to the, the driveway side of that picture, you're there, and just uh, flip that around. Okay, so the one that has, yep, so we're looking at the first porch on the driveway side um, where you can see the roof is is falling away towards the driveway because the two pillars that hold that up are in, uh, they're broken and in disrepair and need to be replaced. So that's the only, the only thing we're looking to replace is the round pillars going to 
square pillars, either four by four or six by six, whatever the contractor can do, um, because the round pillars are, they're not fixable. Um, that's the only thing that would be being replaced. Everything else would be just uh, repaired with new wood, pressure treated wood, because all three porches are in need of, of fresh wood and, uh, and repair. And you're also proposing Trex decking for all the decking on the um, all three porches, correct? We were doing, we were thinking about that of just going to brown because of we paint this basically every year just because of traffic. Um, but what I've just learned today is that if Trex doesn't get enough sun, it tends to be slippery, so we may not do Trex at all. Okay. But it would still all be the same. It would all still be the same color: brown on the bottom, cream or off white on top. Okay. Any questions, board? What's happening with the railings? Are those being replaced, or are those being left in place? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. What, what's, what's being done with the railings? Are those being replaced as well, or are those going to stay? Uh, from what the contractor told us, that they would stay. He says you could probably use this, the existing railings. Uh, some spindles do need to be fixed and re-squared uh, re up because the way those round posts are, everything's pulling away from the house right now. Any other questions? Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve, provided that the, the colors uh, remain the same as the existing. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all set. You'll just have to get a building permit through our codes department. And they can be contacted uh, at 315-792-0163. Excellent. Thank you time. very much. I appreciate your time. Have a great night. Hi, you too. Take care. Uh, just, just testing our audio here. Can you guys hear us? Yeah. Versa Hi. Keep? Yep. Okay, great. They, they didn't have a microphone plugged into the computer that you guys should be able to hear them now. Perfect. Thank you guys you so much. Go we'll, back uh, to that. Back, I will circle back to case number 03-21421 Herkimer Road. Sakib Dirk, I hope I'm saying that right. The applicant is looking for a certificate of appropriateness to make exterior improvements to their property. Uh, we just uh, talked about the, the conditions of that. Um, would the applicant at this time like to walk us through uh, the plan? Uh, yes, uh, uh, this is Akiv, and the uh, uh, reason why I'm uh, asking for painting and everything, this house is vacant for uh, almost a decade and in my neighborhood, and uh, it just came up to me, we purchased this house for a family purpose, uh, and uh, of course I want to repainting the house, it's the historic, I'm not going to change any siding, porch and front, basically will be repaired on the front exactly the same way. Only what we basically need something different will be a little bit different color, not exactly same. What we want to do, we propose that desert stone. Uh, and uh, also on the back of the house, completely on the back house, instead of one window to taking out, replace the window, we like to put the door for uh, entrance from the back uh, kind of a um, uh, little bit separation back and front, additional door. 
and uh, on the front of the door one tiny porch just a bit a uh, couple stairs to get to the door and get into the house from backside So you can see it's a corner of the property. Um, this is the front view, and this is along the side street, and the garage is in the rear. And this is the color that he's proposing, the desert stone. Um, he's just using that for a reference for color. This, this is for siding, but he's just using it for a reference for the color for the paint. Uh, Phil, you have any um, uh, architectural concerns? Still still on? Yes, we are here. Okay. So, uh, um, so I guess my question is: you, so you're only painting it? You're not actually putting smart side on? No, he's just painting it. Okay. Scraping the old paint. It's a cedar siding and like to keep that and just a scrape and paint. So yep. the, uh, was the trim going to be a separate color? Uh, yes. Uh, and what color were you planning on using for the trim? Uh, probably some kind of cream color incorporated into the desert stone color or something. Like that. I mean, trim just around the windows and doors. Right. Patty, can do you have a picture of the back of the house? Uh, Where he's talking about putting a he's putting a door in. Is that what, in place of the window, or I, I got to reread it? This is the idea of what he's looking for in the rear. Um, I don't think I have an exact picture of that particular area. This was what he was proposing as what it would look like after it was completed. Oh, um, okay. So that's not there right now then. No, I don't. I don't have a photo of the rear. Okay. I don't know how we missed that, but you know, we can provide that. And so basically, just a existing window. It's a very high window. It's almost all the way to the floor. Just that window will be replaced with the door, also with a half glass, like a window. So nothing uh, sort of structural or design changes at all. And what kind of door do you plan to put there again? Uh, like an entry door with a half glass. With a, like a, a wooden door? Uh, like a, a fiberglass? No, it will be a, a fiberglass, like a wood grain uh, door outside. What kind of doors on the front of the house? Uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, old architectural wood door, and also I didn't uh, say that I want to replace that too, but yes, uh, if it's possible to replace because of the uh, insulation and everything, but also kind of uh, fiberglass architectural door uh, with a, like a half light or maybe even just a ter ter one third light on top, like existing doors. I think we're going to replace the door. I think we'd like to see uh, some information in the door that we're going to replace it with. I, I can't hear very well the question. Excuse me. So I'm saying if we replace the door, I think we would like to see a, you know, an image of what it's going to look like. Um, you know, something similar in style to what's there to try and maintain the, the, the look of the house. The idea of what it's going to look like. 
outfits. The last can photo. You, the like last to photo. See, they'd like to see um, what you're proposing for the front door. I, the I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, if it's possible, to put a little bit wider door with a side light. If not, I'm going to keep the same size door. Uh, also, fiberglass look like a wood grain. I mean, nothing basically. I really, even my personally, I don't want to change a lot of uh, look wise of the house. I just want to repair that the best way I can, you know. But the old door, it's uh, not closing properly. It's uh, basically gap between the jam and the door, and it's impossible to fix that. So. Well, I don't have an issue with the, the painting and all that, but if, if the door gets replaced, I think that they should at least share that with us before placing it. Okay, can we can we do that by email? Would that be okay? I, I, I'm fine with that. I just you know, I'm fine with that. Okay, so to keep to keep they they're fine from the understanding with the painting and the rear door, um, they're concerned about the front door. So um, once you decide on what you're gonna use, um, email me a photo and a, or a rendering of that, and then I'll send it out to the commission and get their uh, take on it. Perfect, I will uh, send you a picture of that door, what I have in the mind, but yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and uh, definitely something what will be incorporated into the house look i really don't want to disturb the uh, uh architectural the 100 years old so <clears throat> okay we will send a picture in the mail of the door what i want to put up front an email i'm sorry just email it to me to keep yeah it would be yeah Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Board. Is anything wrong with the roof? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Is anything being done with the roof? Yeah, the roof. The roof needs replacing. Just right shingle roof like it, it was existing shingles but yeah the roof uh, the roof is basically replaced by the previous contract previous owner before then i purchased the house okay. uh bill or mark either if you like to make a motion uh with our stipulations that we discussed in it doesn't matter, <laughs> Phil. If you want, go ahead if you want. It doesn't matter. Either one. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted uh, with the stipulation that they um, submit what the front door replacement will look like um, and get our approval for that. Uh, Marnie, you second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, carry. All right, so to keep just um, get that to me, uh, the front door proposal, and then and you can get your building permit through code. Okay. I know you have, I know you have an interior building permit, so they'll just have to update the one that you have. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you nice so night. much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, give me one second. Let me try calling her again. See if I can't get her on the phone. Otherwise, we can't do the last one. All right. Okay, hang on. Thank you. Second. Yep. We're trying. To, we're trying to get the other member um, on on the call because we only have three members at this time, and Phil Sabara, who works for Bonacci Architect, has a conflict. Hey. Uh, so, yeah. So he's going to have to abstain from the vote. So um, unfortunately, we won't have we won't have a quorum. So we're trying our best. Please bear with us. Because uh, Phil still has to uh, still has to abstain from the last um, project. So we wouldn't be able to do it. No, Phil Phil vote on the last um, project. So that's why we need you.
Or I can, do uh, you want me to read you the phone number? Okay, one second. Patty, what's the uh, phone number? Oh, wait, I, Does she I want me it. to text it? I can text I, I, it to her. Does she want 408 that? 408-418-9388. Does she need a passcode to call in? Uh, I, I can send it to her. Oh, uh, she's texting. Well, all right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, she's going to call in any moment here. Sorry for that, everyone. Oh, that's okay. Better than being tabled, though. <laughs> True. <clears throat> and then Marnie, could you do the last one? Because I don't, I don't. Yeah, know. you want me to read? I'll read the description. Yeah, it's right pretty lengthy, you... but I'll read it. Yeah, once she uh, jumps. Up. Okay, once she gets on. Yeah. Okay. Please. Yep. I don't see her yet popped up, so I'll give her another minute. All right. <laughs> Bill, did you uh, did you design this project? No. No, but we we do work for ICANN, so the city recommended that I abstain. It would have been harder. Arnie and I would have been harder on it if you did. Where is she here? Uh, Patty, did she speak to you? Did she respond What's to your that? text? Did she respond to your text? No, I just I sent the information to her. I don't see her yet. <clears throat> Sorry, everyone. Hopefully, there'll just be another second here. Patty, do we have an open seat on the uh, commission? We do. We do. That's why it's difficult, you know, when somebody has to stain and, and a member doesn't uh, show up. Right. So. Yeah, understandable. <clears throat>
I think she just joined. It may be her. Vicki? I'm, I'm so sorry it wouldn't go, wouldn't go through the first two times. That's okay. Crazy. That's okay, well, right. we, I'm so uh, sorry. we have the representatives from Integrated Community Alternatives Network uh, for their property at 106 Memorial Parkway. So, Marnie, if you want to go ahead with that, that would be great. Okay. All right, so we're going to review this SMH case number 0521-106 Memorial Parkway. The applicant is CSR Architecture, owner Integrated Community Alternatives Network. Um, it's in the SNH zone, and they're looking for a certificate of appropriateness. In accordance with the requirements contained in Section 229-294 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Utica, the applicant is seeking approval of a certificate of appropriateness in order to add an addition to the above reference property. The property was acquired by ICANN for the expansion of their organization's offices and operations. In addition to administrative uses, the site will add an institutional use through the Children's Museum, which will enhance the organization's mission as an innovative community-based provider facilitating individual and family-driven services to restore social, emotional, and behavioral health. The scope of exterior renovations is limited to in addition to the south side of the building, which houses the building entry lobby, stairs, and elevator. This addition is strategically located to have limited visibility from Memorial Parkway. There is a more direct visibility of this feature from Holland Ave. The addition combines rectilinear forms representing the stair and elevator, stair towers, and a circular form for the balance of the entry lobby and activity space. The exposed stair and elevator shafts shall have an architectural veneer that is a warm gray beige to pick this color in the existing building stone veneer. The applicant is still in the process of selecting and finalizing the CMU color and texture. This addition is continuously clad in cellular carbonate translucent wall panels for the full 20 foot height of the addition. These panels represent the identity of ICANN and create the character of the interior and exterior of the addition. They have treated this as a separate aesthetic point of departure that represents the future of this community organization but leaves the remainder of existing building character intact. The other exterior renovation is the addition of six shed dormers located at the third floor of the building in the existing slope mansard roof. These dormers will allow some natural light into the third floor. The dormers are located to maintain the lines of the building roof edge and the edge of the existing mansard overhand. The sides of the dormer shall be clad in flush, uninsulated wall panels that are meant to relate to the roof overhand metal cladding. The roof at the shed dormer shall be a one inch standing seam roof panel, which is intended to complement the clay roof tiles on the mansard roof and not overpower the tile roofing as evidenced by the one inch standing seams which viewed from the ground will be unobtrusive. The color of the shed roof shall be a dark gray and the wall panels will be a medium warm gray selected to complement the mansard roof overhang metal fascia. For the vast majority of the building exterior outside of the addition connection, it is planned to retain all existing finishes, finishes including glazed storefronts cast in place architectural concrete, stone veneer panels, and clay tile roof shingles. There will be a small panel infill at the north elevation of the building Memorial Parkway, where a section of the storefront will be removed and infilled with solid wall construction with an exposed plaster stucco to match existing soffits at the above overhang. At the roof, due to the failure of the entire roof system, it will be completely removed and replaced with a fully adhered EPDM membrane, which will not be visible from the ground. 
It should be noted that as part of the roof demolition, two large air handling units that are mounted on the roof and visible from the green at Memorial Parkway will be removed, eliminating this visual image completely. At night, the site lighting is specifically designed to cut off the light to adjacent properties. Using LED lighting heads, the actual shape of the photometrics can be set very accurately, allowing this cutoff to be achieved. The light in the addition rotunda space has preset lighting controls to be able to modulate lighting levels to suit the functions inside and the time of day, night. The cellular polycarbonate translucent wall panels inherently diffuse the light at night and creates the effect of a glow as opposed to light glare. Existing mature landscaping will remain unchanged. Additional site improvements include removal of the building's degraded front entrance at Memorial Parkway, including the plaza, planters, stairs to the building, and the doorways to the building entrance at this location. A new ground mounted facility sign will be installed in the location of the existing signage at the northwest corner of the property. A decorative screen fence six foot in height is proposed along the existing hedges at the south boundary. This development will provide 104 parking spaces, inclusive of five handicapped spaces, two bus parking stalls, and a bus staging area for riders to disembark at the proposed south facade addition. A portion of the existing parking is being repositioned away from the neighboring properties which will minimize overhead glare onto the neighboring residential properties. Vehicular site ingress and egress at the Memorial Parkway and Holland Ave will remain unchanged. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Glad I didn't have to read that. Whoa. Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. <job>. <laughs> oh yeah. Is this the, uh, okay. is this the, old, the old union building? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, yeah the, the city school district used to, oh be here. So, oh, I'm sorry. Whoever, whoever would like to speak on behalf of ICANN, that would be great. Um, whatever photos do you want uh, me to go to, please just let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is uh, Bill Pennick. I'm a project manager and architect for CS Arch. Um, I have with us uh, Tom Kenny, who is another architect with us and working on the project. And of course, we have ICANN in their conference room, as you see. Um, the one thing I, I do want to know, um, because it, it's, a, it's a late material change and it's a little different than what we're looking at here, is the translucent wall panel system has been changed to curtain wall. Um, and I'm not sure how you want to handle that. I have updated drawings I could share and, and, and send to you. Uh, for your records, uh, I'm not. I guess I leave. I ask the board um, how you want to handle that. What are you changing it to? Curtain uh, wall and glass. I'm sorry, I didn't. Did you say glass? Yes. Can you just rifle? Through the pictures just so we could see all of them because we're just sitting on them. Sure. If, if you start from the beginning, I can walk you through them real quick here. We can start with this one. Is this the first one? Yeah. Looks like it. So the, the top elevation is the north elevation or the or the facade along Memorial Parkway. And as you see on this elevation, we have three shed dormers that are aligned with the storm stone panels that are existing on the building. Um, at the two ends, you start to see the size of the, the dormers that are on the east and west facades. And where you see uh, a step in the grade, it steps up. There's a solid uh, beige panel that matches the columns. That is the infill wall of what used to be the main entrance to the union building. So that wall is that glazing is being removed and replaced with this solid wall 
Um, and that the main reason for that is for um, the museum's displays, they have interactive displays on that level. And uh, it's required that they have uh, a solid wall to project onto in this location. Um, there's a, a sliver of a uh, rectangle above. Uh, that's the, that is the uh, height of the elevator and stair addition, which you see better in the east elevation below. So the east elevation, you, you see the, the single end dormer, which again aligns with the stone panel. Uh, you see the side of the elevator and stair addition and then the re rotunda entry lobby addition. And if you can go to the next one, the south elevation now gives you a big picture of what this um, uh, building will look like from the parking lot. Uh, the rotunda addition has two entrances, one blue, one green. Uh, it's circular, that's why we call it the rotunda. Um, and then you'll see the masonry veneered addition behind it, which houses the stairs and elevator to access all the floors in the basement. And the west facade is very similar to the east facade. You mentioned the uh, translucent wall panel has been replaced with a uh, curtain wall. How do you propose to divide the glass? We've divided it into, Tom, it's a, you can speak to that better than I can. <laughs> okay, so the, the, it's it's a, like in a typical curtain wall system. There's vertical supports that you know, span the entire height, and then we're breaking it with horizontal bands that relate relate functionally to the the roof of the adjacent uh, uh, vestibules that enter the rotunda space and and the lines on the on the building beyond. Um, it's it's essentially going to be segmented uh, glass, but it looks like a continuous curve, and um, the the glass characteristics are yet to be defined based on the um, solar heat gain factor requirements and controlling light level of the space. But they provide a lot of transparency from within the space and outside of the space, which was from a design point of view very important to this client. Yeah. Do you have a photo of? Um, that you could just readily email me, I can pull it up for you. I can. I, I can share it now if you'd like. Um, I apologize. I'm not really sure. I, I can do it. Okay, so I think I have I have control now. That's what it all for. Didn't everybody see that? So it'll look like that. Yes. Oh, that's gorgeous. So there's. I apologize for the late design change last week, but the translucent panels just weren't progressing like we had all hoped they would. <laughs> I like the glass better, <laughs> personally. I like yeah, it better. I, we all do. That's uh, that's very impressive. Yeah. Very okay. nice. And then, and then and, uh, um, going back to, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you. Sorry, right, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to rifle through. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this would be the view from uh, Holland Avenue. So you know that that entrance to the parking lot that, that is it exists right now. This is how you would see the addition with the building and the parking. Parking's not really changing in this portion of the site, but hardly changing at all. <clears throat> and then from the corner of Memorial and Holland, you can see you don't see the rotunda. You start to you see the the dormers and a portion of the stair tower. The, the addition was strategically located to avoid that direct kind of view of the uh, rotunda space from Holland Avenue, and still keep you know the original elevations pretty consistent. Right. 
And then if you could just uh, walk us through signage and stuff uh, and whatnot. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and here's a view from Memorial Parkway as you sort of already mm -hmm. passed the building. But, you know, if you're going westbound, you'll start to see this from this end. Because as you know, the, the parkway is, is part of a national registry. So we were trying to be very, very um, uh, appropriate to what we do with the building so it does not affect that neighborhood. Is the landscaping changing at all or just use the same uh, uh, landscaping that's there? We're pretty much just, it's just getting cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. We're not taking the trees down. Okay, good. We have one um, crazy question that really doesn't amount to a row of beans. Will the section of railroad, historic railroad, be disturbed? No, it'll remain where it is. Um, okay. We're not going to be extending paving into that area or anything like that. Okay. Very good. Okay. And then. Thank uh, you. I can show you the updated renderings and what they look like from the elevations. So you can see the the north el north elevation does not change. This is the infill panel that we've been talking about here. But you can see that the the rotunda now has a a, a more transparent look to it, more refined look to it. And then the other two. So I'll be sure to send you updated copies of these right away so you have them for the file. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And I can, uh, I'll stop sharing now. Let's see. You can keep it. That's fine. No, okay. <laughs> no. I have no problem with that. I think they'd rather send so the older yeah. view. And then signage, there's one view that speaks to. To signage perfectly and that is we intend to remove the city school district signed um, and put a new sign up with some landscaping around it the exact signage design hasn't been finalized yet but the location will remain the same well, patty they would just come in for that when they're ready for the yeah, yeah you can it. you can just submit when you're ready for that um you know okay. it'll just be one quick meeting um shouldn't be a problem are you looking you're not looking to do any digital or anything of that nature are you uh i'm gonna let i can't answer that <laughs> no i uh this is steve balger i'm the executive director here at, at i can joined with some of the folks from from our team um but as of right now there's there's no plan for digital we would keep fairly consistent with what's there, what Utica City School District had, uh, but we'll certainly come back with that plan when the when the time's appropriate. Okay. And then we have the, the of the glass enclosure, right? Which I think looks like a million dollars that you have there. Is that one good was that what you want to use or is that just a mock up? I'm, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Billy, no, talking about sorry. the signage the vestibule. Is that an example of what the signage might look like? Oh, the signage. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just an example at this point. We're working with ICANN to further develop signage. Oh, okay. Boy, that's pretty. It is. Uh, Marnie. Vicki, do you have any other questions? I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't either. I, I don't think I have any other questions. I think they were pretty yeah. thorough. There is a lot of traffic on Holland Ave because I live over in this neighborhood. And um, there's a lot of traffic on Holland Ave that's going to, you know, that's going to be an eye catcher, I will say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For the exterior, be... where the school is, I would... I would recommend or hope maybe even an illuminated sign would be nice, even if it's not digital. Um, that would probably really pop up, I would think, of Parkway. But, uh, you know, do whatever you, you you feel necessary, obviously. But hmm. And then that, even that I can't sign on above the vestibule would be 
nice if those letters lit up, but um, it's not my money. So <laughs> 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 you know, that's really sharp looking. Really pretty building. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, the, the uh, entrances to the parking lots remain the same. They are yep. now. There's one yep. way, and there's also one on Holland. That's correct, and that, that will remain the same. Okay. Any other questions, Bert? And they did uh, go before planning board uh, Thursday evening and mm -hmm. uh, started the seeker process, and they will have to go back to the planning board for final site plan review. I'll make a motion to move it. Um, uh, pending uh, final review of any signage that will come forth with. And, and that's second. to include the glass curtain wall, correct? Yep. Okay. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Phil? Well, no, I, I like it <laughs> from Rod Soda. <laughs> Come here, yeah, I apologize. Nice, right. job. nice job, guys. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Take care of you. Head out. Have a good uh, night. Again, if uh, just come back for signage and you'll be all set um, and you'll proceed back to the planning board. Correct. All right, you we certainly will. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Then, uh, Is there any, anything you, further you uh, want to discuss? You said uh, maybe in April we'll we'll meet in person again, but we don't know oh. quite. Hopefully, we're going to try. So, um, like I said, it wouldn't wouldn't be with the applicants, but it would be with all of you. So, um, just makes it makes it a little bit easier to everybody to be in the same room, not to have you know connection corruption or anything of that nature um right. it's a little bit easier anyways heading in the right direction yeah so, uh, so oh kids are have, kids are back <laughs> lucky you um, almost almost anyways i got them full time now almost <laughs> good to hear marty i'm sure it's a lot yeah. easier it's it's interesting. Hey, have a good night. Thanks. Have a great time. Bye. Bye. Bye.